the marathon. For many, the ultimate test of human endurance. 26 miles, 385 yards. A physically and mentally draining feat that quite literally changes your body. Now imagine doing one four times in four days in a desert. Okay, now imagine doing that blind. This is the Ultra Marathon, a 150 mile long race through the Namibian desert in some of the most difficult conditions on the planet. And if you can't see, you need a guide. And in this case, the guide was a smartphone. You're experiencing sensory deprivation because you can't see the train. I had headphones in with the app, so I couldn't really hear anything. And then all you've got is the feeling underfoot and you're never too sure what the next step is going to be. Running through uncertain desert terrain is what Simon Wheatcroft has spent much of the past week doing. Simon has a degenerative eye disease that's left him blind since he was 17 years old, but he's never let himself be defined by his lack of sight. After proposing to his girlfriend halfway up a cliff face, Simon took up running in the field behind his house. He then moved onto the path and then the road, memorising objects, distances and undulations to guide him. The only problem is people. Uh, people I was going to say, the things you can't <laughs> memorise are the things that are moving. You probably don't realise that you're blind because I, you just wouldn't imagine that if you're running towards me, you're blind. What, what I try and do to sort of deal with that is a lot of people are not willing to run as close to the road as I am. So I'm literally running the curbs down. So I, you know, there's no mistakes. If you make a mistake, you're into the cars. Whereas a lot of people are not willing to cut it that fine. They'll run close to the grass, where it's perhaps a little bit safer. So to avoid people, I'll run the line that people aren't willing to run. Mistakes do happen, though. You know, I've been hit by a van and stuff down there, but, you know. Well, stuff happens. <laughs> Get up, carry on running. I did. His amazing feat has been made possible by technology that helps him to keep his amazing feet exactly where they should be running. Originally using a run tracking app called RunKeeper, the team here at the IBM Bluemix Garage have helped to develop and adapt it specifically for Simon's desert needs. So the difficulty with the desert is there is not uh, a normal path like here. You cannot just go along the street with Google Maps because you are running in the sand basically. So it's not a defined route. And also there is no mobile network in the desert. So it was very important to um, make it work without mobile network, just running on with GPS basically, and uh, help him to not get off track and to guide him in the, in the right direction. So there are beeps. So there, uh, if you go too far to the right, it's a high pitch beep. And if you go too far to the left, it's a lower pitch beep. And it uh, increases in frequency the further left or right you get off track. And what happens if we hit start? Then it beeps like crazy because you're far away from the desert. Right, here we go. Detecting track. We're too far from the desert. <laughs> and it's saying left. It's saying we're too far to the left of the desert yes. now. Not right, because that would be a high pitch beep. <laughs> we're too far to the left of the desert. Yeah. Simon actually trialled the app earlier this year in the New York Marathon. Except Simon being Simon, he went to Boston ran from there to New York and then ran the New York Marathon because, well, yeah, no idea. But developing such a specialised app is not without a rather unique set of challenges. So I had the idea <laughs> because he had his cute dog Escort with him um, at our office and I asked him, is Escort coming with you? And he was like, no, no, it's the desert and the dog is not running with me that far and that long. and." Um, so I need an app and I was like, okay, cool. Um, how about we do this app with a dog parking if you get off track? <laughs> and like depending on if you go off more to the left or more to the right, uh, different breeds are barking. But uh, then he said he, he might be scared to hallucinate because of the heat and everything. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Personally, if I started hallucinating that dogs were chasing me, it'd make me run further. But anyway, this app has been a key component in allowing Simon to achieve his dream of competing alone without the aid of a guide. Oh, this lovely fella. So when I was sort of in the open plain desert, it worked fantastically well. And, you know, I got that real sense of independence. This was the first time I've ever had a chance to run alone. And, you know, that was thanks to this app. 
And there was one point where I was sort of running into an aid station and I just started to cry because I couldn't believe that for the first time in my life I could do this alone. It was thanks to this app on his phone and these beeps that were helping guide me through a desert. Simon made it almost 100 miles into the race before having to pull out due to the terrain and extreme heat. But if anything, that disappointment has made him even more determined to succeed next time. Would you do it again? Yeah, I'm going back next year. <laughs> As I finished, I was going to put on Facebook that I tried to fail, I'm going back. Then I deleted that bit because I thought if she finds out through Facebook, she's going to kill me. Yeah. So then when I landed last night, went out for dinner, and she went, you're going back, aren't you? And I am, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't be taking me out for such a nice meal. Wow, Simon, shake my hand. It's such a great story. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank and you. good luck for next year. Yeah, thank you.